A guy needs someone to be near him. A guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. Don't make no difference who the guy is, long as he's with you. I tell you, I tell you, a guy gets too lonely, and he gets sick. Now that we left the goddess forsaken place, my plan could finally get back on track. Dodge with another two days walk to the southwest. Maybe if three, if the weather turned bad again. Even if it didn't, I'm not sure that it wouldn't be a smart uh, to attempt the trip in my condition. And the four hours of rest I'd gotten was nowhere near enough for what I'd been through. I had to make a judgment call, and as I always knew, time was of the essence. Better safe than sorry was a more practical take on my plans. Awkward phrasing. I know you don't know about... I don't know about you, Pradius. But I was thinking, we bunkered down for a while over there. I pointed to the old farmhouse, hoping that inside would be just yet another run-down ruin, and not filled with ghost foals, red-eyed shadow monsters, or something less desirable than the two. Raiders. We'll make our way to Dodge the first light tomorrow, if weather permits. I second that. Priest lets out a yawn, and craned his neck until it popped. Provided the farmhouse is structurally sound, that is. As funny as the concept might seem, there were very few buildings in Equestria that weren't in danger of falling to pieces anytime soon. And the general rule was that if it's still standing, then it's safe. Though if there's anything I hate more than fighting raiders, it's finding oneself in an exception to the safe building rule. Prudius put a hoof to his chin and rubbed at it, ignoring the thick coat of mud he was painting on himself. Yes, that farm does resemble it. Resemble what? I picked my hooves up as I walked. The wet sloshing that they made as I trudged my way through the mud towards the farmhouse irritated me almost as much as Prudius's cryptic speech. I believe I've heard of this place in my travels. He finally walked after me, shortly followed by the heavy spurts of Iron Will's hooves gave as he stomped through the mud. Awkward phrasing. Around 40 years ago, this place was controlled by a notorious gang that would prey on merchants and travelers alike. That is to say, until one of the merchants fought back and wiped the gang out. To my knowledge, it's been unused since. I wouldn't care who used it, as long as they're gone now. I said just this. A red bar popped up on my EFS in the direction of the house. Well, story goes that no pony ever saw or heard from the gang again. Worst, I'd say, that's inside is a bunch of rad roach, or possibly a feral dog. Harmless creatures, if anything. His words were well-timed, stemming the need for me to grab my rifle, but leaving me still cautious. We finally reached the front porch, and upon stepping into the wood, I was happy to see that the house didn't come falling over to me. Not only that, but whatever was in my marker lay under the stairs in the cellar, its hatch bolted shut. Though I figured we were safe from the thing in the red bar if it didn't move. Obviously, it either knew that we were too much to fight, or it honestly didn't care what we were going to make ourselves at home. It's a nice place, you know. Striding across the porch, I kicked at the door and watched a slide back as a heap of dust fell off. He was right. This place hadn't been touched since those days. Nearly anything following the door is example, and was caked with a thick layer of dust. No, oh, I really hope the beds in this place aren't covered in dust. I whined and made my way up the stairs, listing as a few of them gave louder creaks than I would have liked to hear. Once up there, I looked around and spotted an open room near the end of the railing, and seeing that the bed inside looked like it had been given the same treatment as every other object. I shrugged and made my way towards it, reluctantly peeling the covers back with my hoof as my nose began to tickle. I wiggled it, but it only got worse. Throwing my head back in a sneeze, I sent even more dust into the air. It was suddenly like I was out in last night's blizzard again. The room was nothing but glowing white motes of floating uh, dust. I stumbled from the room, content to give it a minute for everything to settle before trying my luck again, when I heard a high-pitched scream. 
Instinctively, I hoofed my rifle into my muzzle and took off towards the stairs. As I swung around the banister, I found that the cellar door lay wide open, and the panicked whines of Pretius were coming from below. I rolled my eyes and made my way down the steps, wondering in the back of my head where the hell Iron Will had wandered off to when he could have just as easily taken care of whatever this is. Storm! Kill it! Pretius whined as I ducked down through the cellar entrance, finding that there was a large steel room hidden under the house. Pretius was struggling to keep his hooves from touching the floor as he clung from the massive metal door. It seemed that he was afraid of one single feral ghoul. Not even one in good condition, either, seeing as it had to rely on scraping its chin on the floor as a means of locomotion, probably because its legs lay splayed out to its sides, unmoving, and most likely broken. I frowned as I spotted a dull shine in a circle on the monster's skull, above the glowing eyes. I'd seen a few too many unlucky ghouls like this in my time to know it's probably one that started to go feral and some pony tried to put it down. Unfortunately, they'd fucked it up, and the bullet got lodged in the ghoul's skull. Who knows how long this thing's been locked up down here. But as I raised my rifle to my hooves, aimed and fired, I could at least take solace in the fact that it wasn't here anymore. Oh, thank the goddesses! Prettius panted out, slipping from the door and holding a hoof to his chest. That thing was trying to murder me! He let out a shiver and took a step out of the giant metal vault. You saved my life. And I should have let him murder you! I took my hoof out of the action and gave him a good smack upside the head. What? Did you forget how to use your legs? I could have died of boredom before you even got an inch closer. He gasped and covered his muzzle with a hoof. You mock my fear? I'll have you know that I'm, uh, necrophobic. And I have a crippling panic attack any time I see those... things... are around. He prodded me in the chest as I chuckled at how ridiculous that sounded. Hey, I don't take your fears lightly, do I? No. That's because I'm always too busy doing all the work to pay attention to anything that comes out of your muzzle. I turned and took a few steps up the stairs. You know, you could stand to be a bit more useful if you're going to wander about. On second thought, just don't wander at all. We've got a schedule to keep to, and I don't want to waste all my time saving your flank. So, let's get some rest. He stomped back up the stairs, making my annoyance obvious. Every step uh, caused just a little more dust to be kicked up. Not to have the same problem twice, I held my breath as I got up the stairs, moving in quick bursts as to not disturb any more of the agitating particles. When I reached the bed, I took in a big breath as much as I could, and curled my forehoofs around the blanket, tearing it off and shaking it wildly before diving into the bed, curling up under it as well as I could to keep the dust away. Even though I couldn't tell what the stains that covered the moldy mattress came from, it was still a bed, and within only a few minutes of laying still, I managed to finally fall asleep. I awoke with a yawn, stretched myself out on the bed as my healing injuries felt a little better from yesterday. The AI in my vision was curled up as well, little Z's emanating from her muzzle as I wondered if a computer could get tired. Throwing the old blanket off, I went to hop off the bed, but paused as the smell of fresh cooking hit my nose. The thought that Pretius was still up annoyed me, seeing as it was ready only... 9 a.m.? How the fuck did I only sleep for two hours? I mumbled as another half yawn, lazily gathered out my stuff. Those must have been the best two hours of my life, because I felt that despite my aches, I had so much more energy. Once we get on the road, we'd be back in Dodge in no time at all, so I could pick up some much-needed provisions. My mane hung in a tangled mess across my muzzle, and the glint of light on the mirror in the bathroom gave off made me want to fix it. So with my gear secured, I walked out of my room and down the hall, stopping when I heard a curious noise coming from the other bedroom. I blinked as I watched Prettius snore loudly on the rug in the other room, his muzzle laying across the pages of an open book. I pointed a hoof at him in disbelief as a thought ran through my mind. Once again, I swung my rifle around on its sling, 
and hoofed it to my muzzle as I dashed down the stairs, nearly losing my hoofing halfway down due to a bad step. Recovering on my legs as I braced myself at the bottom, I spun around, looking for the bar of my compass and finding that there were two pink-colored ones next to each other, both appearing non-hostile. I remember that one of them must have been previous upstairs, but the other one was our guest. So up to the edge of the kitchen I crept, stepping cautiously forward as the sound of cooking didn't let up. Come in, come in. The raspy voice of a ghoul called out as I tilted my head half around the corner. The glowing ghoul gave me a toothy smile as he bit down on a pan, coaxing the sizzling meat he had cooking on a plate. You woke just in time. The eggs are almost done. Go ahead and have a seat. Was this stallion serious? What? Did he think that his I was his long-lost daughter or something, and that he was half a step from turning feral? I let my rifle hang from its sling again, unsure if I'd actually need it. How did you get past Iron Will? I swear to the goddesses, no machine is a bigger disappointment than this contract has been. I'm going to need Pi to either send it away or go fucking rewrite its programming so it's actually useful. Oh, you're a mechanical bull. Easy. He turned from the sizzling pans and hoofed at the shredded lab coat he wore, showing me a small rectangular identification card that I'd seen all too many times down in the horrid labyrinth. Got this little number inside a ministry hub out west. To be honest, I did work for the ministries once, so it's not theft. It's more like borrowing from a co-worker. Even though I didn't know the mare it belonged to, I was still sad to see that she died trapped under a fallen sparkle cola machine. But it's a more common death than one would think. He turned towards the food and tossed some of the hay he had fried onto the plate as well. It's good to know that Iron Will has a gigantic flaw in his system that was mass fucking produced back in the war. My stomach grumbled loudly as I stood and watched the steaming food on the plate. That's great and all, but what the hell are you doing here? The smell of food on the plate he was cooking was driving me crazy, but I needed to focus on the real, on the half-feral, rambling ghoul was doing cooking our food in the first place. Same as you, I suppose, trying to make a living off the dead. Well, that is until I found you here. He looked back and gave me a smile that didn't make me feel any more sure he wasn't drifting towards becoming feral in the next five minutes. Ghouls don't so much need to eat or sleep, and I had a bit before I wanted to get moving again. So when I saw you resting upstairs, I figured it'd be a nice surprise to cook you breakfast. But I don't even know you. This was just getting creepier by the minute. He didn't appear like he had any ulterior motives, but the fact that he found me asleep and didn't kill me right then and there has to at least give some good points to him telling the truth. How did you figure I wasn't just going to come down here shooting? Well, you see, back when I worked for the ministry, I volunteered to be hit with this ray gun thing, and now I can see the future. He beamed a bright smile as I struggled, struggled to process that. Oh, and I can also see the sixth dimension, which I know really shouldn't be there, and at the very least, shouldn't taste purple. He gave a smirk, and it finally hit me that he was being sarcastic. Or I've been secretly following you for a week, and now I can't resist the thought anymore of how tasty your soft and smooth flesh is. Okay, that was unfortunately a disturbing possibility, and moved this conversation from sarcastic straight on down to creepy town. You have to ask yourself, do I need a good enough reason to make a simple breakfast for a stranger? I scoffed at the notion. Yes, well that at least is good enough that other ponies won't shoot you. With as many unfriendly ponies, zebras, and monsters between them, you need a good damn reason to keep from lead from flying. Well, you haven't shot me yet, have you? He smirked again as he turned away from tending the last pan still in use. While it was a good point, if it weren't for the computer on my leg, and the fact that I just had the most amazing two-hour nap of my life, I'd most likely have gone in shooting. 
The thing is, I was told that friendship is magic, and it really hit me here. You know how that happened? He thumped at his chest a few times before he went into a coughing fit, ending by spitting a wad of black tar-looking goop onto the floor. That didn't happen, but what did was I felt good again. The kindness of friendship must return to the waste if we're ever to go about bringing back civilized ponies. As he turned and bit down on the pan, I had to think to myself that if there really was any point in trying to be civilized, other than the fact that it would put me out of a job, would every pony really be better off if we all just sat around fires singing songs of friendship? The Wageland has a society and rules all of its own, and every pony works to make their lives better, so what would be the added benefit friendship provides? Shaking the thought from my mind, I looked back to the ghoul, who was pleating the eggs next to the other mouth-watering sides, and the question of where he'd found the fresh eggs in the wasteland was gone. I just wanted that food. He set the pan down and hoofed the stove off, lifting a forehoof and looking at the top of it in shock. Well, would you look at the time? I must be off, or I'll be late for my meeting. In the blink of an eye, he had galloped out the back door and was sprinting off across the now mostly dried fields in a cold wind blew in. Remember, friendship is magic. Spread the word. His shouts carried to the kitchen just before the door swung back and slammed shut with the wind. I stood perplexed as the whirlwind of activity had thrown my mind for a loop. Thanks? I guess? My stomach churned as the smell of the hot food entered my nose, restarting my brain and pointing it directly at the food. Well, no sense in letting the food go to waste. I mean, if it was poisoned, then that was an awful lot of work to sell himself as friendly for no gain. There was a soft creak that came from behind me. Instinctively, I pulled up my rifle and spun around and aimed it. It was previous. What are you doing, Storm? He gave a small yawn and walked the rest of the way down the steps. If you wanted my attention, you could have just asked. No need to go slamming doors. She was talking with some weird-looking stallion. Pi chirped up and came to life in my pip vision, smiling as she bounced on her hooves. He really needs to see a doctor about that glowing issue, though, because ignoring it would be a not very bright idea. She face hoofed right after she spoke it. Ugh! Why do these jokes go into me? Even as I wondered how long she'd been up, I just rolled my eyes at that, no longer caring. If you don't like it, couldn't you just get rid of that coating? I reslung my rifle and walked over to the delicious breakfast, taking in a deep whiff of the luxurious treats before me. She changed my layout to blue. But it's part of what makes me special. Then I shifted to gold. I don't ask you to change your coat color just because I think gray is boring. I couldn't hold back anymore, sending the annoyance of both her and Prettyus to the back of my head as I dug into the plate. Oh god, this is, it tastes much better than it smelled. And did he use spices on it? This is the best meal of my entire life. Hey, Storm. Prettyus' voice pushed from the back of my mind. That smells really good. Any chance you could... Share. I stopped and scrunched my muzzle with a wine. It was so delicious that there was about half of it left. I just wanted to keep going and leave the useless jerk to fend for himself. With a small sigh, I took a step back. Go on, take the rest. I hated the idea of giving a prisoner something as good as this. But in the interest of friendship, as the ghoul suggested, I guess Prudius wasn't the worst guy I could be treating better. But make it quick. I want to head out before the weather takes a turn for the worst. He hoofed at the air dismissively as he walked over. Well, the weather's been clear since yesterday morning, and I don't think we're due for another storm for a while. He licked his lips and leaned in, starting to take small bites of the food. What the fuck are you talking about? That snowstorm came out of nowhere yesterday. I shook my head and walked for the door. If he wants to act ignorant, he can. It doesn't change the fact that it's still my job to turn his ass in. If we make good time, they might even pay me a bonus for getting him there in a timely fashion. He swallowed the food in his muzzle and shrugged. I know you were asleep through all of it, but yesterday was a pretty nice day. 
The ground dried up nicely, and I got a ton of reading done. He took another small bite, the end of his muzzle curling up into a smile. This is quite tasty. What? I threw my hooves up and onto each side of his head, sorcerously turning him towards me. I slept all day. He nodded slowly and chewed at his food. I let go of him and danced nervously on my hooves in a light panic. Get your shit together. We're leaving. Now. But he looked back at the food longingly. In an action he probably didn't appreciate, I kicked out my forehoof and hit him right uh, in all stallions' sweet spot. He let out a shocked gasp, and I quickly hoofed the plate to his muzzle, sliding the rest of the food in. Oh look, you're finished. Now let's fucking go. I pointed my forehoof at the door and watched as he nearly choked on the food, coughing and sputtering as he glared angrily at me. My augmented vision shifted to blue as Pi frowned. You didn't have to hurt him. Yes, I did, because now we can leave. I snapped back. And you don't want to talk after what you've done to ponies over the years? She shifted to red. They were all selfish and had it coming. Everything swapped back to blue. We were all alone, and nobody wanted to help. Her image laid down, curled up. If you don't like how we treat others, why don't you treat your friend any better than we did? He's not my friend. He's a prisoner. I stamped my hoof on the floor, as Prudius slinked away, stomping up the stairs as he went. He's part of a contract, and if I don't turn him in, do you know what that makes me? I did my best to stare at her. It makes me a liar. She shifted everything to pink again and got to her hooves. He stayed with you, helped you out when you were hurt, and this is how you repay him? She shook her head. If that's how you treat the ponies around you, then you can just leave me in the next suitable body you find. I thought we could be like sisters, but I guess you're just too absorbed in yourself to care. She flickered away and took the rest of the display with it. Damn it, really? I sat and lifted the pit buck up, finding that it was completely dead. You're overreacting, Pi. Do you have no idea what life is like out here? I waited for her to come back, but nothing happened. Prudius came back down the stairs with his gear on and walked into the kitchen with a furious look on his face. Fine. Let's go. His magic swung the door open and he trot down into the field. How the fuck did I become the bad guy in all this? I muttered to myself as I got up. I pushed open the kitchen door and walked up to, to it, trotting out after him as Iron Will came around from the front of the house. We were a day behind schedule and had to make a good time if we were going to make a dodge quick enough that we might not run into any unsavory types. The last thing I needed was to run into another bounty hunter looking to take my claim because I overslept. The short rocks were huddled against were not the most comfortable cover to use, but they did reflect the bullets that were being sent our way. Of course, this had to happen today. Everything was quiet for two hours, and wouldn't you know it, BAM! Raiders! I hoofed the action closed and fed a fresh round into my rifle, glancing over at Prideus, who just glared at me angrily. That stallion could really hold his anger over for my earlier actions, and I really didn't help that I knew he would be doing something more productive in this fight. He wasn't. The shooting stopped momentarily and I grunted, pushing and spitting myself out over the cover. I fired into the rusted remains of a sky carriage, punching a few holes in it until I heard a loud yelp from the other side. The muddy brown pallet of a pony fell out from his cover and held his leg. The raider bit his tongue as he muffled a scream. A thick trail of blood came from his forehoof while I took his opportunity to mercifully put an end to his pain by the way of a headshot. A blur of movement from the other side of the carriage prompted me to drop back into cover. Another shot of bullets sparked off the rock as I fell behind it. You know, you could be helping. I muttered to the useless pony next to me, sticking my hoof to the pouch. I wiggled it around, looking for a couple of loose rounds to stick into my own gun, but coming up short. I don't know what I could ever do, as I'm just a simple prisoner with no emotional needs whatsoever. He was playing the drama queen, and I really didn't have time for that right now. I held you for a storm, and I got nothing in return. Why should I care about anything anymore that you need? Another few shots chipped away at our cover. How about the fact that if I die, you do as well? I growled as I viciously shook my hoof in the shadow bag, 
looking for any hint of a single goddess damned bullet. You like living, don't you? The heavy stomps of iron will as he finally caught up to where we were drew my attention. The luminous blue eyes shifted to red as he as bullets flew and sparked across his chest. He vented a blast of steam as his legs compressed and he leaned forward. Knowing where this was going, I was really amazed now that I could watch without fear of him running into me. The pistons in his legs gave a small hiss as they set into place. They fired with a mechanical clang as he charged forward, each step propelling him at an amazing speed. Previous and I barely had enough time to get up and turn around before he plowed straight through the rusty carriage. The raider let out an agonizing scream as he was skewered and thrown into the air by Iron Will's steel horn, hanging there for a moment before landing with a meaty crunch onto the dirt. I wasn't sure what had just watched that I transpired, but I knew it was both awesome and a damn good thing that he was on our side. An emerald flash came from behind and overhead, catching my eye as the shape of a pegasus lined up their saddle and let off a pair of distinctly high-pitched shots at Iron Will. They struck the dirt harmlessly as something nagged me from behind in my mind. I knew a green pegasus with weapons like that, but from where? The green bolt took off straight up as Iron Will snatched from her, just a second too late. I caught a glimpse at the ribbed rifle slung on the mare's battle saddle, and her identity came back to me. Iron Will! She's friendly! I hopped up over the rock in front of me and trot over to him, the Pegasus now looping around for another attack. Iron Will turned to me with his eyes changing back to blue when he nodded, crossing his arms as he tried to flag down my old acquaintance. Flaring her wings, she stopped her dive, transitioning to slowly hovering above us. I cupped my hooves around my muzzle and shouted up to her. It's been a while, hasn't it, Pallet? Though technically adopted into the family when she was little, the green pegasus was Harmony's uh, older cousin from up north. When Harmony first moved to Dodge, Pallet used to come down now and again and help her babysit me. As I grew older, she came by less and less, only swinging by when one of the family's carga caravans swept into Dodge. And of course, I took up bounty hunting and crossed paths with her, and it became a rarity. Yeah. It has. Making your way back to Dodge? She dropped down in front of me and reached out, pointing at Iron Will. See you got yourself a bodyguard. She looked at the remains of the sky carriage and raider. Very efficient? I laughed and walked up to her, throwing a hoof around her neck and pulling her into a hug. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. I looked back to Prideus as I heard him trotting towards us. Letting go of her, I stepped back and took her in seeing that she's got plenty of new scars on her coat. But yeah, we're on our way back to see your cousin. You heading that way, or are you heading north? Her eyes brightened up with the news. Well, feel free to ride along with us then. Short Staff and I are on a delivery run up to deliver some special parts. She scratched at her mane as she scrunched up her muzzle. You have any clue why she needed power armor parts? See, the rangers in Manhattan are willing to pay quite a hefty amount for reinforced buffed piston tubes, seeing as they're uh, fairly rare. She nodded for me to walk and talk, turning and staring toward the rolling hills a short way off. We struck up a quick pace, walking past the two morons who had decided to ambush us. I looked at her and tossed my mane from my eye. Yeah, well, it probably has something to do with the fact that the rangers down there have been trying to annex the whole region. Prideus had joined up on the other side of me. His ears were turned attentively to listen, even though he still had his grumpy look on. Still, could be for them. Could be for an ex-ranger. Hell, it could be for some pony that just likes to collect shiny things. I shrugged, see, having seen weirder stuff in the wasteland. She laughed at that. True. It could be, though I hope she's getting paid a great deal for them. She smiled, uh, her smile diminished slightly and she turned her jade-colored eyes to the sky. It's getting harder to do these runs since last year. Every time we leave now, there seems to be more raiders, monsters, and machines looking to kill us. I've got a pretty bad feeling that our spotless track record is going to go up in flames one of these days. 
She looked to me and forced a smile. I hope these parts really do help her. So do I. I mirrored back her concerned look, knowing full well what she's been talking about. In just about every bar and inn I go to, ponies are talking about how bad it's been getting. I would say that they need to toughen up, but after last night, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of other things in the wasteland worthy of fear. But enough about that. How have you been? I wiggled my eyebrows and nudged her. Found yourself a nice stallion yet? Or are you still on that mare kick from a year ago? She blushed and looked away. That was just a fling. I just got swept up in the moment. She stammered with a squeak unlike anything I've heard before. But no. I know, I know. A mare my age needs to find a special sun pony. But honestly, I don't know if I can. She bobbed her head as she thought. I mean, let's just say you didn't have to work as a merc anymore. Bounty hunter. I corrected her. Whatever. She threw back paint playfully. Let's say you found yourself a stallion who made enough caps that you didn't have to work anymore. Do you honestly think you could just give this all up and just sit at home? I mulled it over for a moment before giving her an answer. I... I don't think that's who I am. Sitting around would drive me insane after a day. I'd have to be working. That is a funny thing for me to say. Who am I? After what happened in the facility, I'm not even sure what I am at all anymore. I shook my head to clear it, looking back up at her. Well, let me ask you this. You're a mercenary. Bodyguard. She corrected with a smile. Whatever. I chuckled. Why not just find another pony in your line of work? Then you'd know he'd be there with you the whole time. One problem with this, honey. The reason you don't travel with other body hun bounty hunters is probably the same reason us caravanners don't travel together. She sighed and shook her head. I don't think I've ever seen a caravan up close for years. So, getting to know one of them? Not going to happen. Excuse me, miss. Prettius spoke up, making me cringe. Might I inquire as to where you found those goss rifles? He gave her a dumb grin as we walked but only until he saw my annoying gaze. Oh, these? She lifted her wings and looked at a pair of high-tech guns. They were my mother's. Yeah, it's a bitch to find the ammo, but there isn't anything like it when it comes to effectiveness. She looked at me and returned the sultry gaze I'd given her earlier. So, Storm, this guy your special zone pony? Prettius? Goddesses, no. I scoffed and rolled my eyes ending up looking at him as he deadpanned. He's just work, that's all. I sighed and looked back to her. I'm having as much luck as you in the love department, but it doesn't mean I haven't been trying. Maybe bars aren't the place you should be looking then. Prettius mumbled loud enough for to annoy me. I'm sure on purpose. I laughed and swung my gaze back at him. And you're at the very front of love advice? A guy who locked himself in a library surrounded by the living dead and ghosts. I leaned closer to him as he grimaced, deepened. Tell me, did they have a book in there about how to avoid getting bounties placed on your head? Or how about one on how to make yourself useful in a firefight? Storm. Pallet called out and nudged me with her wing. I didn't mean to start an argument. I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. I shouldn't have let it get to me. I swung my neck to her, again, feeling a stiff pop and a sharp pain jolt through it. Never again am I going to stand in the middle of a conversation. As we crested the top of the hill we had been climbing, the back end of the wagon I saw swung out in the open in front of me, instead of front of a small campfire. A tan stallion was tending to the boiling pot hanging over it. The sweet smell of corn permeated the air around us. So, what was it, Pallet? Just some... He spoke as he turned around, pausing mid-sentence as I raised a hoof and waved. Storm? He laughed and brushed his brown and gold mane from his face. Wow, it's been forever, hasn't it? Good to see you. They're heading up for your sis as well. Mind if they ride along? Pallet asked giddily. The moment of the times we... All hung out years ago flooded back through my mind. 
Yeah, I don't mind it. He shrugged, turning the brown lump next to the chair. It took me a few seconds to realize that it was actually the laying form of a two-headed Brahmin. Shortstaff pointed back to us as he spoke. Mural, Martha, do you mind pulling them along till we hit Dodge? One of the heads looked up with a smile, as the other one looked like it was sleeping. Oh, don't be silly, Mr. Shortstaff. The two of us don't mind pulling a wee bit extra weight, don't you know? We're just glad to have Miss Powell watching over us. Now that I think of it, every Brahmin I've ever spoken to has that same funny accent, but I've never heard any pony with it. I turned my ears back as I heard the heavy stomps of Iron Will coming up the hill. The large machine stopped on, to on top with us, looking around to survey the area. Oh my goddess. I certainly don't mind if he's going to be coming along with us. Quite a looker he is. I face hoofed from how weird that came out to be and decided that I didn't care. So, I looked over to Short Staff, who also couldn't take his eyes off the large machine. Do we leave after lunch? I smiled as the thought of food set my stomach off. Seeing as I didn't eat anything before Ponyville, and the fact that I'd slept all day yesterday and uh, had a small helping of breakfast didn't quite seem to hold me very long. He nodded and levitated a ladle into the soup, stirring it slowly. Yeah, sure. I wasn't expecting you, so there's not going to be much to go around. But what the hell? You're like family. His eye twitched and his grin widened. Family that totes around a giant freaking metal minotaur! He had developed into one of his usual obsessively curious states. Where'd you find it? What is it made of? How's it powered? I mean, come on, he's a giant freaking minotaur, this is so cool! Long story short, he followed me out of this giant underground science place run by this oddball AI who's now stuck in my pit buck. I shrugged and watched as he walked up and nearly salivated all over the enormous machine. Pallet put a hoof on my shoulder, and with a panicked look, she glanced down at my pit buck. It was where? She grabbed my forehoof and pressed the buttons on my pit buck. Where is it? I have to know if it came out of an orchard. I put my hoof away in her confusion. Why does she look so scared? Orchard? Are you alright, Pallet? Your coat's turning pale. The pit buck came on with a flicker, and the interface shifted to pink while the small filly propped up into the display. Hello. My name's Pi, administrator of the Wolf Orchard. Who are you? Pallet took a step back, stumbling and sitting down. Goddesses, it's, it's true. She took a moment to gather her thoughts, as I wasn't sure what to do, choosing to just sit there silently as things unfolded. You, you're an artificial pony. Yep, and you're a pegasus. Pi bounced around in my vision as she talked. I'd love to have wings like you. I could soar through the air and do tricks and stuff. It'd be awesome. I cringed as her voice squeaked through the Pip-Buck speaker. That's great, but what did your facility specialize in? She leaned close as, I, as she spoke. I noticed Prettyus leaning a bit closer to me as short staff didn't seem to hear a word of this. Pi, was it? Your facility didn't have to have any clones in it, did it? Sure it did! Her voice blasted through the speaker as Pallet went white as a ghost. <laughs> what a silly question, seeing as you seem to know Project Harmony personally. What I wouldn't get is why every pony seems to be calling her Storm. Is it like some nickname? Pi gasped. Pi is my nickname! Pi started to ramble on as Pallet looked more confused and distressed than any other time ever. Pallet, apparently I'm not who you think I am. I started talking slowly, not really sure how I was going to explain all this or where to start. But as I said... It's a long story. Good. Pallet nodded softly. Because we're going to speak to Harmony when we get to Dodge, she'll need to hear all about it. Lunch went by quickly, as did the cleanup, so we were able to get back on the road in no time as Pi and I told her about what had happened in the facility. I told her about the overall goal and the project, all the hard work they put in, and even the flashbacks I'd been getting. 
she seemed to take it all in stride, and the more I told her, the more she seemed to relax. The only odd question that she asked Pi was if they had any pony in cryogenic storage there. When Pi told her that the facility was elsewhere, I explained that I remembered about the surroundings in my dream. Sounds like some of the places out in the Badlands to me. She sighed and looked at me with a tilt of her head. Sorry about overreacting earlier. I've just had... Let's call it bad experiences when it comes to my family and those places. Ask Harmony about it sometime. I'm sure she'll tell you. I will when I see her. I wasn't sure why, but I knew I wouldn't like the story. I nudged her with my shoulder as we walked. But you never would have guessed that I'm older than you are, did ya? She laughed. Yeah, you got me there. She looked forward and quickly held her hoof out in front of me, her ears twisting and turning as she looked out at the only big object on the horizon. I wasn't exactly sure how the rusting, canted hulk of a large boat got to be all the way out here, but the pony-sized hole corroded into the overside of it was the perfect spot for an ambush. The wind died down for a moment, and there was only the sound of iron will trailing up behind us as slowly as ever. I looked down into the compass of my vision, noting all the red lines sitting over her at the wreck. Pallet? I whispered. I know, she whispered back, not moving her gaze from the dark hole. The moment I take off, unhitch the cart and use it as cover. Got that? Yep, I replied simply. The whirlwind of activity started as she kicked off and spread her wings. I spun and bolted for the cart as quick pops of gunfire filled the air, ignoring the small dust plumes that erupted from around my hooves. I reached the cart and bit down on the quick-release straps, pulling it as I pressed myself close to the old wood. Prettius and Shortstaff slid up to the cart as both of their horns glowed, sliding a metal plate out from under the other side of the cart to block their shots at her hooves. So glad I installed that. Shortstaff laughed as the rounds pinged harmlessly off of it. Yeah, we'll need to start shooting back with something, and my gun's empty. I called back to him, adding myself to peek around the corner. An emerald streak came down from above behind the boat, the shrill report of her gauss rifles ending with a heavy spray of red mist from the hole. A hoof-sized shaft of light opened in the dark, back wall of the boat. Iron Will's pistons fired, and the heavy metal machine took off towards the rusted wreck as I watched. Shouts of panic erupted as he got closer, the red lines in my vision shifting about quickly, only a moment before he plowed into their cover. The boat was rend right in half, as the old metal gave little resistance, and collapsed completely under its own weight. The plume of dust concealed most of what was going on, but from the frantic gunshots followed by the screams of horror and pleads for mercy, I assumed that the raiders were being ripped to shreds. A shine came from beside me, as a small mirror floated past my head. Dear Celestia, that's one hell of a machine. Shortstaff remarked in awe, observing it like a smart pony by not sticking his head out like I was. Tell me, was there another one of these where you found this one? Nopey nopey! Pi answered before I could, dancing around in my pit buck, holding a flag to her hooves. Iron Will's one of a kind, and happens to be the best minotaur ever. And that's when I heard it, a high-pitched whine that sounded distant, almost like a rocket did in flight. But it sounded like it was alternating pitch lightly, and growing louder. I turned to follow the noise, spinning and looking across the plains from us, only to find nothing that could be making the noise at all. I looked at the others, and I could make sure that I wasn't the only one hearing it, and sure enough, both Shortstaff and Prius were looking the same way. Though Prius had his eyes to the sky, a snarl pushing across his muzzle in disgust. That whirling got louder, and I started to get flashes in my mind, remembering the sound from when Mama, I mean Fluttershy, would visit me. The sound was faint in the ductwork, but it was always appeared around the same time she did. I turned my eyes to the sky as the sound changed sputtering and shifting in tone wildly. What the hell was it? The cloud covered above bulged out and darkened momentarily before the black object tore through it. Fire and smoke shot from it as the flying object rotated like a clock as it streaked towards us at incredible speeds. The pallet dashed in front of us and waved for us to get away, 
grabbing me and dragging me down to the dirt with her, as it passed low enough that it might have taken our heads off. The heavy craft slammed into the dirt, with a deafening noise that sounded like someone was running their hooves over a chalkboard in my ear as hundreds of manticores roared at once. I watched from on top of Pallet as the black craft torqued and rolled to its side, disintegrating and throwing shards of itself all over as the whining noise cut out amongst the chaos. As the object tumbled, there was a sharp crack and it split in pieces, the bigger section bouncing into the air before slamming down again hard, coming to a rest as it lost its momentum. A smaller section of it kept rolling and punching through the dust where Iron Will had been. The sickening sound of shearing metal ceased with an explosion that sent smoking metal shards into the sky. A ringing in my ears, followed by pieces of hot metal starting to rain from the air, the urge to get under the wagon overpowered me as I scrambled to crawl there. This thick steel sheet on the side of the wagon slid out enough to provide a quicker means to cover, and both Pallet and I joined Pretius and Shortstaff. Pallet crawled closer to Shortstaff as he shook in fear, holding him close as the distant look in his eyes reminded me that a thousand others I'd seen in combat. He wasn't a fighter, and while the horrors of the Wageland were alien to no pony, that just happened to... happened had even me jittery. The strange thing was Prettius seemed calm as a statue, looking at me as if this were just another day in his life. Every pony all right? Pallet yelled out, looking back at me and waiting for a nod. I... Iron Will? My vision fuzzed for a moment as Pi dropped the flag she had in her hooves, turning the whole display blue as she sat down and held a hoof out longingly. She started to cry, and, best I could tell, I wiggled myself around to the cart and turned in that direction. Crawling forward slowly, I peeked an eye out from under the cart, looking around. Most of the wreckage spewed thick black smoke and lay on the dirt in front of me. There was a steel-encased rear hoof, blood oozing from inside of it, as I was reminded of the sleek power armor that the Pegasus above the clouds wore. Two friendly blips lay on my EFS in the direction of the shrouded, shredded middle. The thought of how anything could have survived a crash like that escaped me, but slowly I heard the offsets of heavy thumps, and through the smoke the metallic minotaur came into view. He used his forearms to prop himself, and his left leg dangled, sparkling and crumpled underneath him. My vision flickered to pink as Pi danced about again. Woohoo! Yeah, go Iron Will, you're the best! Wait, it survived that? Pellet spoke up slowly. How could it have survived in the middle of all that? I have no idea. But there's another survivor in there somewhere. I turned and looked back to her, tapping on my pit buck. Well, at least I think it's in there. The thing only reads living ponies, right? Then, might I suggest if we go see if we can help? Prettius broke his stone gaze and stared right into my eyes. I'm fairly certain the area is safe to check now. Vertibucks don't normally explode more than once when they go down. He was wiggling himself from our safe haven, and I wanted an explanation as to how he knew what it was, but I was afraid he'd just go on rambling about how he read it in some book. <laughs> He's right. Shortstaff nodded and tore himself from Pallet's hold with a look of determination. We need to see if they need medical attention. He looked at me as he turned himself. Storm, because you know exactly where they are, can you head over first? I guess, I said softly. I didn't want to go out there, not knowing who or what is still alive. Sure, the pit buck would have told me if it was hostile, but this wasn't our problem. We had iron will to fix, and then we needed to continue to dodge. But it wasn't just any pony asking me. It was a pony I considered to be family. All right. Rolling myself out from under the side of the cart, I got to my hooves and brushed myself off. Prius was a few steps ahead of me, looking amongst the bits of smaller debris. For what, I couldn't say, but he looked surprised that I trust pat him, though not surprised enough to speak up about it. I followed in the direction of the line, swinging myself wide around the large section of twisted metal that had bounced itself to a stop. 
giving it a wide berth in case something hostile were to find its way out of it. As the line showed whatever pony was there, lay directly in front of me, I gave a sigh as I found it lay under a large sheet of pockmarked and charred metal. I reached forward and hoofed at it, giving it my best to ignore the sharp edges as it sliced into my leg. I pulled it back, finding that it was a lot lighter than I expected it to be, and was incredibly cold for the fire it had gone through. I pushed the large sheet away from me, looking down to see the still body of an armored Pegasus stallion. His blood was dripping slowly from several holes in the armor, and I didn't know how much longer he was going to last. A short staff trot up quickly, with a cloth bag and his magic. The yellow sack was adorned by three butterflies of the Ministry of Peace. Fuck. We need to get that armor off of him before he bleeds out. He squinted and stopped as he reached up and tapped his horn a few times. Think, think. His eyes shot open and over to me. Storm, can you get your robot to tear it off him without hurting him? I don't have any tools, and he doesn't have much time. I sighed. Iron Will, I need you here. I shouted, watching his short staff open his bag, levitating a small potion and several bandages out. Iron Will stomped over, his leg having magically repaired itself without the, in the short time since it was broken. I need you to remove the armor of the stallion, without hurting him. Can you do that? Put up two of his fingers, signaling for us to wait before reaching down into the chest plate of the stallion. He opened his huge mechanical hand, gripped it, squeezed and pulling in a few fell motions to rip off a small section of the armor. Before my very eyes, a new hole in the armor started to pull itself together, and before it could go very far, Iron Will used two of his fingers to tug on it and snap a small red wire. The entire armor gave a soft hiss, and stuttered as Iron Will took a step back. The sleek black carapace lifted away and folded back from the stallion, to reveal the trauma inside. His black coat was covered in the sheen of his blood, as several large gaping wounds bubbled and leaked out. Short Staff jumped forward as one of them uh, set out a pulse of blood, spinning, uh, pinning two of the larger wounds closed with his hooves. Shit. We don't have enough potions for this. He looked and shook his head quickly, and darted his eyes about before looking up to me. I need to get the dressing and compression bandages. Storm, I need you to apply pressure and hold these wounds closed until I can get everything ready. On the count of three, you're going to put your hooves where mine are. He took a deep breath and closed his eyes. One, two, three. He jumped back, and a splurt of blood shot from the open wound on the stallion's chest. I scrambled up on my hooves in the right place, not having the slightest idea of what I was doing. Why are we even doing this? Saving some random Pegasus's life was not our problem! Chapter End No pony asks to be a hero. It's just sometimes turn out that way. Quests finished, none. Quest started. Black buck down. Levels earned, one. Perks earned, none.